In this video, we're going to introduce the binding domain and the three binding principles A, B, and C. First, what is a binding domain? A binding domain is the smallest TP containing the NP that we're talking about, or the DP that we're talking about. So for instance, in the sentence, John loves himself, if we look at the, the, the binding domain of himself, it is the smallest TP containing it. So the binding domain for himself is this entire TP here. This is an important notion when discussing the binding principles. So now that we have a notion of binding domain, we can now talk about the principles. Principle A states that an anaphor must be bound within its binding domain. So I have three sentences here. The first one, James said that himself was sad. And this is an ungrammatical sentence. So why is that? Well, an anaphor must be bound within its binding domain. So James said that himself was sad. What is the binding domain of himself? Well, it's the smallest TP. So said takes a CP complement. And then himself was sad is an inner TP. So the binding domain of himself is only this TP here. And in order for an anaphor, in this case, to have an acceptable antecedent and make a grammatical sentence, it has to be bound within its binding domain. But James is binding it outside of this TP, which is its binding domain, therefore it's ungrammatical. What about the sentence, Maria believed that James liked himself? So why is this okay? Well, this is okay because James liked himself is the inner TP. And if we just take a look at himself, himself is bound by James inside of the TP, so it's bound within its binding domain. So the question is, why can't we say something like Maria believed that James liked herself? Well, again, James liked herself is a TP, and herself, the binding domain of herself is the smallest TP that contains it. So the binding domain of herself is just James liked herself. But herself is co-indexed and bound by Maria. But Maria is outside of herself's binding domain, therefore the sentence becomes ungrammatical. So this is principle A. And again with trees, if we just do a tree here, it's usually easier to see because we just take a look at the TPs, we circle off all the TPs, and then we say, oh, is this anaphore in the same binding domain as the thing that's binding it? But it's also important to be able to look at sentences and identify where CPs and TPs are so we can just check to see if it's bound in a string like this. That's principle A. Principle B says essentially the opposite thing, and that a pronoun must be free within its binding domain. What this means is that a pronoun is not bound within its binding domain. That's another way of saying it. So when we say something, Carol said that she was happy. So she was happy is a small TP, but the binder Carol is outside of that binding domain, which is the smallest TP. Therefore, this is okay, because pronouns have to be free within their binding domain. What about the second sentence? Carol said that she was happy where she is somebody else in the Discord. Well, again, she was happy is a TP. She is not bound within its binding domain. In fact, it's not bound at all because it's not co-indexed with anything. Therefore, this sentence is okay. Let's take a look at some more sentences. Carol said that she loved her. Well, in this case, I'm really focusing on the word her. And this sentence is okay because her Her's binding domain is she loved her, and Carol is binding her from outside of that domain. Therefore, this her is free within the binding domain. Finally, Carol said that she loved her, where her refers to Carol. So we already know that she is okay, because she is free within the binding domain. But what about her? Well, she loved her as the smallest TP. 
and it's actually bound within this dot binding domain. So she is indexed with Carol. So she has the same meaning as Carol, which means that in this case, Carol is C commanding her, Carol is co-indexed with her, and it's within the same binding domain. So it's within the same domain here, the same TP. She is just acting as a substitute. So she, in this case, can bind her even though they're both pronouns. So that is why this sentence, Carol said that she loved her, is not okay if her refers to the same thing that she does. That's principle B. Principle C says something fairly straightforward, and you'll usually never encounter a question on exams related to principle C because it's just so incredibly boring, if I must be honest. And that just says our expressions must be free. They can't be co-indexed. They can't be bound. They can't be C commanded by something co-indexed. So she kissed Betty. This is not okay if she and Betty are the same person. Because Betty refers to something in the world, but she, she's not being C-commanded, and in this sense we're kind of saying that she is binding Betty, but she has no referent in the world. So what is she in the real world? Well, Betty has its own meaning, so we can't adopt another meaning from she, therefore the sentence is bad. We also can't say James loved Jared if James and Jared are the same person. But we can say something like she met Maria, where Maria does not refer to she, Maria is some other person, and she is a different person. Principle C, incredibly boring, and I don't want to talk about it anymore because it's just not interesting at all. So let's take a look at this sentence. The kids told themselves that they would be fine. And this is an exercise. So pause the video, circle all binding domains, identify anaphores, and talk about which binding principles are in effect for each pronoun. Okay, you can unpause now. I mean, you already did unpause if you want to hear the words. So the kids told themselves that they would be fine. There's two pronouns here. Well, there's one anaphore themselves. And then there's they, which is a pronoun. So circle all binding domains. Well, binding domains are just the smallest TPs that contain the pronoun or anaphore. They would be fine is a binding domain for the TP. The kids told themselves that they would be fine. Well, this would be for themselves pretty much the entire sentence. So we could just say that well, this is the binding domain for themselves. Okay. I mean, we could extend it to this far, but it does have to be within the binding domain, and the binding domain usually typically only looks up, so there's no point in including the entire TP. Okay. So, let's take a look at themselves first. The kids told themselves. So what's happening here? Well, this is principle A in effect. And why is this principle A? Well, the kids, I should probably put this out here, and themselves are co-indexed. And the kids C commands themselves, and they're co-indexed, therefore they're bound. And themselves is bound within its binding domain. So themselves is in the same TP as the kids. Therefore, this is principle A in effect, and this is okay. Now what about the kids told themselves that they would be fine? Well, they can refer to either the kids or someone else, and either way, it's okay. And this is principle B in effect. So the question is, well, why is this okay? Well, they is bound by the kids, if it is referring to the kids, but it's bound outside of its binding domain. Therefore, it is free inside its binding domain, and it's okay. Because the kids is in this upper TP, and the binding domain of them only, or the binding domain of they only extends to the smaller TP. If it's someone else, it's not bound at all anywhere in the sentence, therefore it's also okay. Okay, so that's a pretty quick exercise. In fact, most questions about binding theory would look like this on an exam generally. But, here's a good question. Which picture of himself did John like, where himself refers to John? And the question is, if we just take a look at this sentence as a list of words, it seems like it would be ungrammatical because himself is higher up in the tree than John. 
So, binding theory takes place before movement occurs. And we can see this. So, what's happening here in the end result, so himself and John are co-indexed, but if we just take a look at this after movement has occurred, John does not see command himself, and it's not even in the same binding domain, because this is the binding domain, the smallest TP. So in order for this to work and to make sense, we have to say that the binding occurs before movement does. So which picture of himself would be down here? I'll just put the word himself here. So in this case, John C commands himself, and they're co-indexed. Therefore, himself is bound by John. Then when we make a question, we move it up, but the binding still holds. Therefore, we can say sentences like, what picture of himself did John like, is still an acceptable sentence. So that is it for binding theory. That is it for the main core curriculum of this syntax course. I may make future videos that cover advanced topics, side topics, extra questions, whatnot, but that is it for the core curriculum of this course. I hope you enjoyed this lecture series, and if you have any questions, please leave your comments in the below, and I will answer them the best that I can.